All right. We're a go. We'll experiment next time we're down there, John. Yeah, we're a go. We are a go? Mm -hmm. Wait. Yeah, we're a go. Okay. Welcome back, System Wars, to another edition of Pedal to the Metal. <laughs> I'm your up. host. I'm your host. Shut your mouth. I'm your host, the Eroica. This is my basement. And Very nice. Thank you. I put I put a little light on. Animal was so excited to see part of my basement because I'm always shrouded in darkness. Yeah. But I'm, in any case, I'm gonna be shrouded in darkness tonight. Nice, dude. <laughs> um, the man to my right is the man, the myth, the hashtag legendary, and co-host to Pedal to the Metal. Hile sixty eight. What's going on, Hile? What's up, guys? Happy to be here to just tell on Eroka. Just a little antidote that I'm just so buried in games. Not necessarily solely, but just games in general. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to be getting Bloodborne, which we're not going to talk about, just because I'm just so fucking buried. That's the plague of having all three consoles, working full-time, having kids and family responsibility. I'm fucking so so many games to play. I still got fucking Gen 7 games to play that have been in sealed packages for over a year. Kyle. So no more buying... Si huh? What if I gave you a crisp one hundred dollar bill? I'd play fucking two games this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of games. So Bloodborne, I'm gonna think I'm gonna wait on it. Either I try Gamefly. But anyway, I'm happy nice. to be here, and I'm looking forward to playing some of that Hell Divers. Delicious, delicious Hell Divers. That's right. And uh, the other co-host of Pedal to the Metal here, the man to my left with the aviator glasses, Mister Animal Mother. What's up, dude? I hate life all over why dude you're always so positive now you're always like you are you're always so positive like six months no not six months ago three four months ago you were miserable no, but now no, I, I you're on top of the world was, it was six months it's going on six months ago i was six miserable. months yeah all right time run no, what a nice bounce good. back life's so yeah. good right now except for my yeah. car except for my car accident that was a bad thing but well, you know, if that's the point where everything turned around, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. My, my, my mom, you know, not to get too Christian on the podcast, my mom said, well, God maybe, God probably just wanted you to have a new car. And I said, yeah, God wanted to put me through a horrific orde ordeal to seem like a spoiled brat. Thank <laughs> thanks, God. Why, um, why, is, why is talking about God in general a Christian thing? Can it be, whatever, um, whatever it is. I'm, I, I'm whatever. You know? See, the, now it's all downhill. All and there's my first buzz kill of the night. It's go ahead. All go ahead. Downhill. It's go all ahead, downhill. Go ahead. First off, I have a gripe with you. You sent me a game. You're like, oh, this is like a Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. It's called like whoa, 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 whoa. it's called it's called Flip Kitty Deluxe Team or whatever. I uh, first of all, there is a free game on PSN that they didn't really advertise that you can go get right now. It's like what is it called? Flip. It's I like can't remember. Flip. Kitty Deluxe Team, whatever. Yeah, and it's it's free on PSN Plus right now, but it wasn't part of like their like widely the advertised. Because it's for the Vita. For the, it's, right, it's for the Vita. Anyways, the description I read said um, tons of high praise from critics and gamers alike, and that the game was very akin to Legend of Zelda: A Link to the Past. And who doesn't want to play more Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past? So I obviously ran right to my Vita to download. I haven't played it yet. No, though. I started that shit up, and it's a puzzle game where you have to flip it left and right. That it is. So, it is not linked to. It's. It doesn't start off like a Link to the Past. It doesn't have like an overworld like Link to the Past. It's just like, hey, you're in a room with two squares, a red square and a blue square. Solve the puzzle and get to the frog. I was like, <laughs> this was this was like one in the morning. I was like, what the fuck did he send me? I was like, is this a joke? You're at one in the morning. You're playing games by the Eroica. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, uh, well, first off, it was called Flip Kitty Team Deluxe or whatever. Did you get it, Hile? I did not. I didn't get that one. Nope. Hile doesn't okay. have a. Okay. I'll look for it though. If it's free, yeah, look, it's. I guess it, it supposedly it plays just like a Link to the Past. No. Nope. So I don't know. If what's that? Uh, what's that? Uh, I always pronounce the fucking shit wrong, but what's that skateboarding game? That's Ollie, free? Ollie, oh, Ollie, Ollie, Ollie. Oh, so good. So good. Can we talk about how Sony knocked it out of the park with PS well, Plus last okay, Well, let, let's, let, let's get into it because that's, that's actually one of the first things I want to talk about. <laughs> We're going to kick it off with PSN Plus. So here we are in the month of March in the year, and I want both of you to correct me if I'm wrong, but 
middle of last year, you were thinking 2015 was going to be the year to knock the fucking door down in Gen 8, didn't you? Yeah. Triple A-wise. You're looking at Uncharted. You're looking at, you know, uh, Batman. And you're looking at, you know, all these games coming out. And now we're kind of slowly seeing everything kind of shift. Well, here we are in March of 2015. And the best games of the month are all indies. All indies. Um, well, I would. Well, first off, uh, I'm, I'm going to counterpoint you real quick. The month hasn't ended yet. Okay. Bloodborne is but, still coming out. And Axiom Verge is also still coming out. Yeah, that's an indie game. Made yeah, by that's, one man. That's really being highly touted, man. I'm just saying, like, I guess what I'm saying, my overall thing is that here we are in March and, like, Helldivers, endless gameplay. Ollie Ollie 2, endless amounts of unbelievably fun gameplay. We got Axiom Verge coming out at the end of the month. We just had Ori and the Blind Forest come out. Another awesome looking game. Amazing art style. And on the other hand, we've got Bloodborne is like the last bastion of hope for... Retail I games mean, this year. Retail games this year! No, I wouldn't say this year. Batman's coming out. That's true. And Well, yeah, there's multi-plats too. And, and, as, and as up and down as Resident Evil Revelations 2 has been, I like the episodic way they've done it and each the second episode was kind of the weakest so far um it's gotten seven six eight so i'm waiting to see how those final that final episode pans out but revelations 2 has been a pretty solid resident evil experience Hyle, do you put any stock at all in any way shape or form in a new uh, numeric value review for an episodic game champ and i were talking about this a couple weeks ago about how I just don't have any. I just could care less about the score on episodic. That's like saying like, it's whole, well, it's, se- it's the second and third puzzle. chapter, right? The second and third chapter of the game weren't that good, so I'm going to give it a five. Like it just seems like way too. Well, they bad. should. Uh, they should score each uh, episode. You think they should? Each episode. I mean, because what would you? What happens if it's an amazing first episode and they give it a nine, and then? But that's you know, kind of what I'm is, saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, go ahead. No, I'm just saying that'd be tough to wait for the whole, especially like games that are. I see what you're saying, though, but you know, it'd be tough when they're probably taking over close to a year to release the whole content for some some of those, or six months, or whatever. So probably ideally, it'd be best to rate the whole series after everything has been released. You're probably right. I just, I mean, you know, I'm not saying that like, you know, obviously a, an intelligent human being can read the review to find out how the second chapter of the game is going. But, you know, you, you see people put such value in in the numeric scores when you're when you're evaluating what is basically one part of a whole with putting a slapping a big number up there. Kind of, I don't know, I don't know if it's the right way to review it, I guess is all I'm saying. I, I think, uh, you know... Th- Giant Bomb had a discussion on this like two weeks ago, and I can't recall the exact discussion um, about numerical scores and stuff. I mean, I did have a tirade about overall numerical scores and how I think they personally need to go away, and apparently it was a little bit of a thing at GDC. Like, at least for episodic games, I think they should wait until the whole package is complete and then assign it a numerical value because i i personally i don't like numbers because people see that and they're like bargain bin and you're like well like you know what are you doing me yeah, i'm just you, tapping you, stop tapping it's it's annoying Sorry. um i feel like for episodic content they should put a thing for each episode and uh assign the whole assign a numerical value to the whole at the end yeah that's kind of what i'm that's kind of what i'm saying like like keep keep the words coming keep the you know how, how does the game feel how does the game play how are the aesthetics of the game you know like keep all that coming but but don't put a number up there put a number at the end when we can say the whole body of work is this not just a piece of it but the whole thing you know well when the retail package releases i think it'll get an eight like what do you like I, okay cool like that's kind of what i'm saying so like I don't know. I guess we don't have to keep going down this path, but I, I was thinking like, what are you going to give give the opening chapter like a, an 8 or a 9 and then the second chapter is not that good you're going to give it a 2? Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it just seems well, like I, you're, I, re- you're I recommending the worth of the game. I don't think the quality from episode to episode and episodic content would drop that harshly. 
I know. Well, like, okay. It's, it's very the... it's very hard for them to drop the ball that hardly yeah. on an yeah. episodic game. And the way Capcom did it was great. I don't know why they did Like, the whole game's been done. Like, it's been out to reviewers. I don't know why they just didn't do a retail release. Um, but I have to say it it was a low it was a low price of twenty twenty five dollars for the yep. whole season for four episodes and I've played the game for like six hours already so well and, and you and you recommend it yeah uh, I hope my one gripe about the game is I hope they come out with online co-op in the retail package or patch it in when the game's fully done. Uh, I don't know why they didn't do that. It has split screen. So the cool yep. thing I've been doing is a uh, friend of the podcast, Dylan, and I have been playing split screen via share play. Hmm. You're not amazed by that at all. That sounds – I mean that sounds cool. You're like, mm. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. No, that's I, that sounds awesome. I mean split screen's dope. Yeah, and to to share play it from his house to my house is awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. P.S. You're, there's you're no, just jealous. There's I, no, you're jealous. I didn't invite you. I am. I'm a little jealous, but dude, P.S. Four has got some. I'm just not not P.S. Four, but Sony in general has got some really really cool features on their devices that like people don't give enough credit. I know Charizard had a really cool thread in System Wars about. Um, you know, Sony having share play being a really, really important like feature for them that people just don't appreciate. Um, another thing I would say is the Vita. The Vita's very existence augments the PS4 experience, and I, I think that you can. That's only a perspective you can have if you own one and use one. But like, I'm gonna play Hell Divers with you guys tonight, and I'm gonna go up to bed and I'm gonna pick my character up and keep playing Hell Divers in bed. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know I'm a, <laughs> I'm a fucking stallion, but. Um, it's, it's, it's just a really, really cool thing. Heil, do you think that that Sony has got cool features, uh, cool enough features to separate them from from Microsoft, or do you think that the the software geniuses at Microsoft actually still kind of run the roost as far as like features on a console? I still think they run the roost. I mean, seriously, because their software, I mean. They're a software company first and foremost, so they have the best of the best working for them. Now, of course, when the Xbox One launched, there were some hiccups here and there with you know how how they fucked with um, the party system um, and stuff. But uh, overall, I still think you can you can compare their strengths. I mean, that's their strength. Yeah. So. Is a, is a software now? If you look at them both, you know, hey, I can launch my console and I can start a game. Both of them can do that well. Mm -hmm. um, I think they both. I mean, everybody wants that one box in the living room where it's all, all your media um, is going to filter through. And unfortunately for me, I don't want my game consoles to have all that extra stuff. I mean, yeah. I I know other people like it, and that's fine for them, but. I mean, do I really need Netflix, for example, on every device I have? My TV fucking has it right now. Right. I mean, DVD players have it. Blu-ray players have it. Now all the consoles have it because they want – I'm sure if you stream your shit through them, you know, maybe Microsoft gets a cut of it you yeah. know, in that case. Um, so anyway, to answer your question, I think overall – the software, probably not as far as features. There's nothing really I can think of on the one. The snap is kind of nice, um, but I really don't use it. I mean, I had fantasy football, and I did like, oh, I'm going to snap my fantasy and check a look at, um, you know, live NFL games. Right, right. Like, like they advertised. Um, when it comes down to it, for me, this is me personally, I just want Game Machine. So if someone likes the other features, that's great, but... If you take all that other shit away, at the core, I think Microsoft is better at the software and definitely better probably in the online because of their experience and infrastructure with um, the stuff. But you get similar experiences. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't see, like, turn my Xbox One and be, like, blown away because I can use voice commands with Connect. Mm. That's just me, though. Yeah, I mean, well, this, you know, the, the share play feature that Sony has is also a very gamer-centric feature. Um, and, and I guess, like, 
to, to speak to that, you know, you, you having all of your emphasis in gaming on the actual machine itself being a gaming machine, um, something like SharePlay to me, I look at that as a gamer and say, that's awesome. Like Animal was just saying, like him and Dylan playing, sharing the game from house to house, like that's kind of badass. All right, so I have a question before we stray too far away. Despite the fact that Suspend Resume is coming now, would yeah. now a lot of people are going, well, it took two fucking years. But Suspend Resume apparently has its ups and downs on the Xbox One, and Party Chat launched completely broken on the Xbox One. My question to both of you is, would you rather have had a half-assed working Suspend Resume at launch, or do you... I'm not saying it encouraged delays in software features that are promised at launch, but do you guys... Would you guys rather have something that takes a while to come out and works pretty damn well, or would you rather have something come out of the gate like Microsoft and the Xbox One, where it's kind of like, eh, it works when it works. When it works, it's really good, but sometimes it doesn't work. I, I would personally rather have something come out and work. I would rather wait and have it work. Um, as much as I think that sometimes delays are... They anger me as a, as a fan. Well, they you know delay I mean? anybody. But, we, but, talk, we discussed that yesterday. Right. As a fan, as, as a selfish guy who wants to play the awesome vi awesomest video games like it, it bugs me. But, like... I would rather a product when it is it's hyped and it's marketed and it comes out. I want it to have the least amount of problems with it. I want to be able to fucking play with it and use it the way it was intended. Kyle, can you please repeat the question again? Uh, would you rather have a feature come out half-assed and kind of working at launch, or would you rather wait for the feature a year or two down the line to come out and work relatively flawless? No, that's a, that's half baked. I or not sorry. That's um hard one to, to answer because the example I gave just last is like, um, uh, the Xbox One's party chat. Now would 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 I want that? Um, it was broken. To be launch. launched like a, yeah. Would I like it like that where it kind of works? Or would I like no party chat? Can you imagine it with no party chat? So, man, that would be bad. And that in that in that case, I would rather have it, you know, come out at least, but. Overall, I, I think it'd be hard to argue that you want something to come out fully functional and working. I mean, we've all had games, you know, disappointment of playing a game, for example, and it doesn't work. Ubisoft you know. 2014. But, but something um, like, but, but something like. There's been like... plenty of them. There's been, I mean, there's been plenty of them. There's been even features with uh, Sony, I think, with, um, there was some problems originally playing like Blu rays, you know. Um, you so you wonder how that shit gets out that someone green lights it to come out to the consumers. So I don't know, that's a tough one to answer. Like I said, that's in my first scenario, I'd rather have party chat than no party chat, but certain things like, you know, I, I want them I've seen half baked um uh DNLA uh, video streaming right now on Xbox One. It doesn't it's show all my files. Ugh. It plays some of them and not all of them. Mm. So in that case, no, I don't want to mess with that. I haven't. Once I saw that, is like I'm not touching that for a good long while till it um, till it streams correctly because it's nothing's worse than like, hey, want to watch something? Hey, look, it plays this one. You go to the next one, unsupported format. What the fuck is the same format as my last one? Or why is only like six of my episodes out of twelve show up? Or mm. why is not this folder of, of information show up? So it's like. No, I don't want to fuck with that. So I'm not gonna. I would rather have that working all the way. Yeah, so that's not a good answer to your. That's not a good answer to your question. But some things I want, like chat, I wouldn't give that up. But other things. Well, you need chat. Like streaming I'll video. Like streaming video. If it's not gonna work, I ain't gonna touch it till it's fixed. So. Well, mm. th that's the great. I'm thing. the fence again. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. That's the great <laughs> thing about SharePlay. Like people are like, well, S Sony hasn't released all their features yet. And like, but look at SharePlay. SharePlay came out and it worked, right? Yeah, yeah, it works well. Yeah, it like, did. I like it came out and it worked, and there hasn't been a fucking problem with it. Like, yeah, I'd, true. Ra I'd rather a, f a good feature like that delayed and worked on than like, oh, here it is, here it is to to meet your demand, but then have it kind of suck ass. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my yeah. Um... 
I, I think I'm with you, Animal, I, I, on, in that respect that I would definitely want – like I, I'm a pretty patient guy. Like I, I'm not going to – I'm not the type that freaks out when when games get delayed or features get delayed, but yeah, when they drop it, that's my biggest frustration is when it's sitting in my hands and then I can't there I can't play with it. And God forbid I have to pay for it and it doesn't it doesn't work. That's what really chaps my ass. So let's talk about the games. We didn't talk about the games. The games of PSN Plus this month. Ugh, oh, there's so many good ones. So many good ones. Let's start with Ollie Ollie too. Oh my God. I want Ali Ali 2 injected into my eyeballs. Yeah. That game is so fucking good. Yeah. How? It's like. It's a 2D yeah. skate. Yeah. And it's fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Like, um, man. Does it get like, um, does it get like trials later on and get frustrated? Yeah, a little bit. The yeah, it gets hard. Not like tri trials hard is stupid hard. Yeah, that's what I wonder, because it's like, hey, this is pretty fun. And it's like, oh, <laughs> let me see some of the later levels they want you to do. <laughs> it's, it's the, it's, I don't, I didn't play anything in Ali Ali 1. I'm, I'm not that far along in Ali Ali 2, but in the first game, I'm pretty deep into it as far as their levels are concerned, and I don't find anything to be like, I can't actually play the game. Like, uh, Trials, you could sit there for 30 minutes and not make the fucking map six feet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Ali Ali, you can always make it. It's of your own accord. Like, a f right. it's a game you have to play continuously to get good at. But it's a right. game like Hotline Miami. I mean, Godline Miami too, where you, it's repetition and then you get good at it. Yeah, there's another indie that came out in March, just stomping the shit out of triple A's. Godline or Hotline Miami too. Like, I liked Hotline Miami 1 a lot. Like, I got it. But yeah. it just came short of, like, being something so spectacular to me. Yeah. Like, it was yeah. still amazing. But, like, yeah. Hotline Miami 2 is everything I wanted. Like, it's really? so amazing. Yeah, I'm going to buy it. So amazing. Soundtrack's good? Soundtrack is better than Hotline Miami 1. No. Yes. Wow. Yes. I, I will say that. The soundtrack is better. It's, Already, oh, and the gameplay is better though. It fucking ramps up the difficulty in the late game. Like, are you playing it on PC? Or are you playing it on PC? PlayStation? I can't play it on the PS. Like, I, I have trouble with that lock-on system, especially with yeah. how quick the movement is. I need that yeah, direct yeah, yeah. access with the mouse. Yeah. Like, I'm sh I'm shaking it around my screen. Sorry, podcast viewers, for disrupting yeah. you. Um, nice, yeah. Um, so, what else do we have then? We've got Countless. Hotline Miami. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Godline Miami Two. Buy it. Uh, uh, yeah. Counter Spy. It's very interesting. Oh, Counter Spy. Game. So, uh, yeah, that's another one that I. Valiant got. Hearts. Valiant Hearts. That Valiant Hearts is PS PS Four. Yep. Well, it's PS Four. Yeah, what's PS3 what's the game that you say is coming out? Sorry. No. Axiom what, Verge. Axiom Verge. Yeah. What's what's without me looking it up. What's what's that game? It's what, Metroid. What is the... Metroid. It's it's you know the original Metroid game. Yeah. It's it's basically like Nintendo forgot how to make Metroid, so this this guy came along and One made man. it himself. One man did all the music, did all the the art, did everything, and it's literally like it's like Metroid. And Shovel Knight's coming to the PS4. But let's talk about the PS yeah! Plus games. Let's talk about the PS Plus games. Counter Spy. How do you guys feel about that? I, I, I love it. I've heard nothing but good things about it. The only problem is I have not played it yet. You're such a... I, what do you want me to do? You're such man? a dick I, butt. I'm, You're such a dick I'm, butt. I'm too busy hell diving. Hell diving. I gotta okay. save, save wait, wait, Super let's, Earth. Well, let's, let's save that for the last. Uh, uh, so excited. Valiant Hearts, I haven't played yet, but I've heard nothing but good things. And Oddworld. They came out with Oddworld for fun. Oh, yeah. Years. New and like, tasty. It was, like a, it was like a last minute scrap, and then we got blessed with all this awesomeness. Thank you, yeah. Sony. And you know what? And and in all honesty, and I'm going to play it right up the middle of the road. I just heard that um, is it Xbox is doing for like a three day weekend. They're doing Dragon, uh, Age. Dragon Age or a week long free Dragon Age Origins. Well, that's or, sounds, uh, yeah, Inquisition. That sounds like the trial period stuff PlayStation used to do. If you were a Plus member, like yeah, like, I, like can, play can you play to the end of the game. Uh, I'm assuming you could. It's a huge game, though. Oh, you wouldn't be able to finish it. Well, no. If you sat down from Friday to Saturday to Sunday, though, 
If you the had main the... story was like 80 hours long, though. So, well, no, if you cut out all the nonsense and just did the main story, you'd probably do it in 50 or 60. Yeah. Just just waste your whole weekend playing Dragon Age. Yeah, it's not a waste, man. That game was so good. You ever, do you know my feelings about Dragon Age? Oh, my God. Um, yeah, that's, that's a cool idea. I think uh, that's a cool idea. I don't though, know. Though the problem is the... The Xbox One internet is potato. It takes forever to download something. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Xbox One internet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, Haya, what are you most excited to play from PSN Plus this month? Uh, I would say probably either uh, Valiant Hearts or Counter Spy. Counter Spy surprised me. Yeah, Counter Spy it looks fun. It, it is a lot of fun. It is. So I haven't played either of them. I got them both downloaded, but um, I'm looking forward to at least trying them. So yeah. they look interesting. But that uh, other one, Axiom Verge, does that come out this month or next month? It's like the last that's day of the month. It's like that's Art, that's Art a pay Street. game. That's not free though, right? No, no, you have to pay for them. Yeah, you do. So I guess for PSN Plus, that's what I said. You'll have that? to pay. Oh. What is it? Twenty bucks? Yeah, probably twenty bucks. No, I might have to wait, but, um, I'd say it'd be is fifteen. It? Ori in the Blind Forest is twenty bucks. That game. Well, I heard it's got like. Um, I got nine. 10, 90, Ten to fifteen hours of gameplay. Ninety play? hours of gameplay. Dragon. Uh, it's a, <laughs> <laughs> fighting dragon. Uh, I'm probably gonna buy that tonight. Yeah, I'd be all dude. Ori in the Blind Forest. I'd be all over. Wait. It the so second now, now my question is: I have a really beefy ass PC. Do I buy it on my PC or my Xbox One? Xbox One, they're saying right now, it's got some frame rate issues, I heard. Bam, compared buying, to buying it on my PC. Thank you. I don't know if it's true. I'm just, I mean, I, I have not played it myself, but I would imagine it's going to run better on the PC 99 out of 100 times. Okay, let's talk about the last big release that came out last week. Jin, 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 jin. <laughs> Hell Say divers. it. Jin, 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 jin. What is that? Dun, 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 dun. It sounds like the Battlefield theme music. I just think it's Commander Shepard, man, going to fight the Reapers. No, that's the battlefield. Have you ever heard the battlefield Is it? music? That's a dun 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 yeah, dun, dun, dun Yeah, that's battlefield. Get your games right. Dude, Hell Divers. Hell Divers. Wait, can I say the quote? Hell Divers. Quote, this game may be perfect. End quote. Animal bovine. <laughs> animal <laughs> mother. Uh, well, animal mother. Well, it is yeah. only on the peep, the PlayStation family. Uh, no, I hated the shit out of Magicka. Let's talk about that first. Uh, I hated Magicka. I thought it was a cool concept that didn't really click with me. Helldivers kind of stripped that concept out a little bit. Uh, I'm focused it more towards button combinations. And I fucking love it. Brilliant. It's so good. Fucking brilliant. I booted up the game. I was like, I was like, what the fuck is this? You're the hell divers, Marquee man. I I mean I'm you just put it perfectly. Yeah, man, it's great. Like, you know, I think that it's easy to dismiss. You look at it from face value, you see the top down, you know, um, uh, smash TV style twin stick, you know, you and your buddies pushing back hordes and it, to an extent, that's that's kind of what it is, and like, there's no story. It's a, a straight rip off of the Starship Troopers, you know. It's look right from Starship Troopers, right out of it, and and that's okay because it doesn't just like Magica. It, it Arrowhead is not like really pushing it in your face. It's more there as the backdrop and the setup. The real meat and potatoes of the game is that you and three other friends ha basically endlessly. Because who wants to put the fucking controller down? Can play maps after map after map of varying difficulties, gaining experience, building up your skills, building and up your character, the, building up your character. Out a tree. Yeah, the, the gameplay is so good. This it's the star of the show. It's why I love indie I, games. I, right I now, would. I would. The gameplay is the star of the show. Uh, I, I I mean I wouldn't call the gameplay top notch. It's the no, well, it is it's top the collaborative notch. aspect it's, it's, of it. It's top. The gameplay is top notch. It's not. Yeah, it is. It's not unique or different. It's that all the systems in the game bring Work. together something yep. 
much more unique. Like the throwing the down, axe. pulling people in, calling in mechs and turrets and airstrikes. Right. And Heil, isn't that why we loved Magicka? Because yeah. because <clears throat> of the fact that it wasn't just like like okay, I'm not knocking Diablo three because I actually think Diablo three is an awesome game, but I think Heil, you and, and Animal who have both put in over a hundred hours into this game will yeah, agree easy. with will agree with me that the, like Diablo is kind of like a you can almost play Diablo with your eyes closed. No, you can't. Come on, dude. Depends I, on what what you have the difficulty. I, I, I'm right? saying depends I'm, what you're playing. Also, they're okay. They're I'm not, not I'm not saying the whole game. I'm saying they're not I'm comparable. Saying that, I know, but uh, what I'm saying is that at face value, you look at I look. I've played Diablo three. I've put, got I don't know 30, 40, 50 hours into Diablo three. And we still haven't right? played it. Well, we've played it a little once, but once. Well, that's, <laughs> that's that we little, haven't played it. <laughs> but but what I'm saying is that you cannot take your eyes off the screen when you're playing Helldivers for a single second because it's just the game just knows what it's doing. It pushes you along. It 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 asks you to be sensible about where you're pulling your trigger, about, you know, how you're surrounding yourself. It's very tactically driven and at the same time it's high action. I love the combination of what they did with the gameplay. Kyle, what do you think? I think it's an awesome game too. I mean, Magic is fun just because the friendly fire um, is. Uh, you really got to watch out for that because. Uh, uh, yeah, totally. It's easy to kill your opponents or sorry, your teammates. Yeah. Um, and it's a perfect co-op game. It's so much fun. Uh, yeah, it just asks you to think a little differently. Go ahead, Dan. Jeff killed me. Oh no. Uh. That's seriously what it would be like. Like, Kyle would be like... We, that, that, we was, to... that was half the time the first time we played Helldivers. You just yeah. killed me half the time. Like a oh. jerk. An animal whined, like, you know, the self-righteous gamer that thinks that his bullets are more important than everyone else? My bullets um, are more important. <laughs> my bullets yeah. are he more shoots important. Me, he shoots me in the back and then runs over me with his mech, and he's like, well, listen, man, I really had to do that. There was a guy <laughs> on the other side of the map. And... <laughs> yeah, self-righteous. Yeah, you got a problem. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. You'll see. I'm, You'll dude, see I'm a, tonight. I love, dude. I'm all about hell uh, Unlocks. Man. It's just constantly throwing content in your face, and it's all. Yeah. It's, and it's, there's a persistent world built around it, where yeah. everybody is contributing. Randomly generated maps, randomly generated missions. It's all amazing. Right. And just like Magicka, and I know you're not a big fan, but I can't stop drawing the the, the same. Well, I mean, they made this game. The spiritual, the spiritual, you know, ness to it is, is that in Magicka you're you are playing a top-down game that is basically a twin stick and hordes coming at you. And if you want to simplify it, then be my guest. Go ahead. But they you're did, gonna miss out that. on the i. Yeah, you're gonna miss out on the idea that what they're asking you to do is to think differently about the way you're attacking the world around you, and that's where it really stands out and why I think it's special. But, it is. Helldivers is a class a game you think it'll come to other yep. platforms uh i think it's definitely going to come to pc i mean arrowhead obviously um they have their with the amounts. yeah and i mean i mean magicka is not a game that didn't get support like that game how many expansions i don't think i've ever seen a game with more expansions than magicka didn't it have like eight nine different i don't know in any case um, I would I would de definitely guess PC and I, you know what I hope it comes to the Xbox One. Fuck I hope it comes to Wii U. Wii U I don't can't. know the fuck's gonna play with you on Wii U, but Wii U can't handle Hell Divers. Okay, I, 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 I said it. Hell Divers wow. is so good. I, yeah, I could play it, hey, dude. I have Hell Divers in the PS3. Dude, I'm just tr I'm trolling. <laughs> Right. What else? So, anyways, what else I, I had I had one more story I wanted to. Add. Are we are we all done with PSN Plus? Yeah. Okay. All right. This is a big one. Uh oh. I just read this story today. Oh no! I know what you're talking about. Sony won't refund a PlayStation 4 user. All right. I'm Plus. gonna. I'm, yeah, no, I'm wait, already... You gotta let me say it. You gotta let me say it. Sony won't refund a PS4 user who lost $600 from hack. And before Animal goes, and I'll give him first word if he wants to jump in, is Sony has said it will only refund $150 of the $600 that was taken. And granted, that's the max a wallet can hold on PlayStation Network. So they're maxing out the kid's or the guy's wallet. The money will only be a PSN credit and not refunded back to his bank. 
If the user escalates the payment dispute with his bank, his account will be banned. If his account is banned, his purchase license for games such as The Last of Us Remastered will be wiped. If the licenses are wiped, there is no way of restoring them. All right, I'm going to say the first things first. It's very sad that uh, this kid got hacked, but the problem is... Dude, it's Ben Sony. But nobody... Well, where did the hack come from? Did he get his account information fished from somewhere, or did Sony actually leak the yeah. numbers? That's, uh, the que- that's the first question. The second question is... Um, I, I think the banning thing is bullshit. Like, if he goes to dispute it with his credit or debit card company, it's horseshit. Like, and they're going to ban him for that? That's a load of horseshit. Third question I'm going to ask. Kyle, I have a question for you. Did you read the Terms of Service or EULA when you signed up for PS Plus? Did you read every article? He's got, a no. tat- he's got him tattooed on his all lower, right, lower right. half. <laughs> e- Eroika, did you read the EULA? Or- no. Okay, no, you and, and, time. and neither did I. All right, yeah. so I did some browsing through the EULAs uh, because everyone in that thread is being a big fucking baby. Microsoft's EULA and Terms of Service for Xbox Live reads that if you have a dispute that that is eventually looking to be taken into small claims court, you have to write a letter or some kind of document to the prospective companies um, to the prospective companies in order for them to start looking at the dispute um, they say that you need an arbitrator essentially a judge to decide the outcome of your dispute uh, and this is for both of them let me pull it up because I did post it in the thread uh, I will read both of them right now Nobody read those terms of service. So when somebody either gets fished or hacked, there's nothing in there saying like, you know, because Sony and Microsoft, they can't, they can only defend so much before somebody reaches those walls and finds out somebody's information. But the problem was, was this kid fished? Was he, was it a hack on PlayStation's part? We don't know. Uh, here, let me pull up the... Uh, what Would Sony be forthcoming with that information if they found out that it was them? I think if there was a mass exodus of cards, they would have to be, right? Yeah. They, like, if the, if there was a really big security breach, it'd have, uh, dude, we live in the digital age. It's going to get out there anyways. So so here here's something that's interesting, and, and this is in defense of Sony. If, if um, I interrupt, I'm sorry. That's okay. The, why wouldn't the kid go after – why wouldn't he start with the credit card company? Was it a debit card? Uh, well, that's what uh, one user, I think Al, Alucard or whatever his face yeah. wrote, was if it was credit like, or debit card, uh, why didn't he go after there? Uh, he said that it looks like it's a pre-authorized debit, uh, not a credit. But here, here's from Microsoft. They're called the notice of dis- the notices of dispute. In an event of a dispute – you or Microsoft must give the other a notice of dispute, which is a written statement that sets forth the name, address, and contact information of the party giving giving it. So if I had the money stolen, I'd have to write a letter to Microsoft in order to refund the money. And the same goes with Sony. Because Sony, Sony's is the same, just worded differently. Giving it the facts, uh, the facts giving rise to the dispute and the relief requested. You must send any notice of dispute by U.S. mail to Microsoft Corporation uh, Arbitration, uh, One Way Microsoft, blah, blah, blah. A form is available online. Uh, yo, dude, uh, you know, I'm on, like, that just popped up on the screen. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, no, but this is, they both read the same. Small claims court. You may also litigate any dispute in small claims court in your county or residence Or King County, Washington, USA. If the dispute meets all requirements to be heard in small claims court, you may litigate in small claims court whether or not you negotiated informally first. Uh, Here's what Sony says. The term dispute means any dispute, claim, or controversy between you, SEE, or Sony Computer Entertainment America, LLC, or any other blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, Whether based in contract statute, regulation, ordinance, tort, including fraud, misrepresentation, fraudulent, inducement or negligence or any other legal or equitable equitable theory and includes the validity enforceability or scope of the section 9 
uh, with the exception of the enforceability of the class action waiver clause below. Dispute has the uh, the broad uh, the broadest possible meaning that will be enforced. So that means if you have a dispute, like if you're like Sony, like the PlayStation 4 burnt down my house, like it, it's not going to go to court because that's obviously ridiculous, but they can do that. Uh, here, here's what they say. You agree to negotiate resolution of the dispute in good faith for no fewer than 60 days after you provide notice of the dispute. So like Microsoft, you have to set, Sony gives their information to, to, uh, send the for send your dispute. Uh, if the adverse Sony entity does not resolve your dispute within 60 days from its receipt of notice of the dispute, you or the adverse Sony entity may pursue your claim in arbitration pursuant to the terms in this section nine. So, so what, why is this about Microsoft, though? Aren't, isn't it about... No, but I'm just saying both companies have these EULAs that, regardless, if you have a dispute, you have 60 days to claim your dispute if you want to go to small claims court. It's not... I'm just trying to say it's not Sony. It's not Microsoft. It's every company, regardless of where you go. And there's a great movie people should watch called uh, Terms and Conditions May Apply, where we hit yes to everything... And we don't know what we're hitting yes to. Like, what right. if it what if it was in the terms of service that like, if your if if fraudulent activity exceeds a thousand dollars, Sony's only available to refund you one hundred fifty dollars of PSN right. credit. And he hit yes, he agreed to the terms of service. And then they're saying, well, Sony's an evil company. It's in the terms of service. You know, this isn't about Sony refunding the money. This is about the terms of service and stuff now. You know what I mean? Mm. Interesting. Um, would you say the same thing if, if it happened to an Xbox person on Microsoft? What do you mean? Would yeah, you I would say Microsoft? the same. Yeah, I would defend Microsoft. Microsoft, the person would have to send their letter of dispute to Microsoft. And the same thing. If Microsoft had in their terms of service, like, oh, we can only refund up to, I don't, they just do cash now, right? If they're like, we can only fill your wallet up to $200. Like and they agree to that terms of service, then that's, yeah, that's I mean, it. It's, I, a, it's know, a terms at, of service thing at this point. At, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, animal. It's shitty. You know, yeah, it's really. It com- it, it just it just it comes down to if the if the guy's information was compromised on Sony's behalf. But we don't know that. Then so Sony Sony should be the first one to be kissing the guy's ass. If if it was not. If that matter, if the guy left his credit card at, at the bar, he got hammered at the night before, and and the, somebody picked it up and went home and bought a bunch of fucking PlayStation games with it. Then, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, then then the guy the guy's got nobody to blame but himself, and Sony should try to protect themselves, and they're they're being kind, giving him back 150 dollars. Well, so that's what I mean, we don't know. That's the key piece yeah. of information here. Was... What do you think? Um, go ahead. I I know I know I know what you're gonna say. Um, Heil, what what were you? What do you think about it? I think he should have contacted his like card company to see what they would have done for him. I mean, well, cards. I don't know. FDA so we don't know the what cards are FDA insured up to X amount of dollars. He should have called the credit card company or the debit card company first. I mean, I'd like to know how he got it hacked. Like if he got fished or what. So mm. I've never had a problem with it. So I would. Um, I don't know. I can see both sides of it. I'd probably give the Lem shit just if it was Microsoft. But, yeah, see? Um, Fucking cows. That's because they're an evil empire, not current Gen 8 console leader like Sony is. But um, Buyer beware. Uh, <laughs> buyer beware. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like to know how it happened. It's shitty for the guy, but at least he got some of it back. I yeah. don't know. A quarter of it back? I don't know. Well, that seems a lot of money. I, I think the... the- uh, the benefit of living in the digital age is now that this is on places like Reddit and GameSpot, I think that Sony will catch wind of it and they'll do something for him. Because yeah. I'm not going to sit here and say, well, Sony, bad. Sony's the champi- the people's champion or what have you. You want to so bad. <laughs> no, I don't. You want uh, to. No, I don't. But, um, you know, if they were smart, they'd be like, they'd come out and release. Like, I would say they would come out today and be like, we've... Uh, we've rectified his situation. We've contacted the proper authorities. We've sent him a year of PS Plus uh, and a couple games as well as tried to get his money refunded to him. It might not be refunded in the next month because of whatever legal disputes between the banks and stuff. You know what I mean? 
but like we're trying to make good on a problem. Yeah. Well, like, it's 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 a it's a she- it's them tossing a shekel at a fan to get get and what they're gaining out of it is really good PR but, by just coming forward and say take care of this. It is that would be a good PR opportunity, but the problem is I'm going to play devil's advocate here. If they did that, then every everyone who has a problem is going to have. Everyone who has a problem is going to be like, well, they did True. it for the, they did it for this one guy. Why the fuck aren't they doing it for me? The best in, Sony, man. The best thing for companies to do in situations like this is let the individual like reciprocate the individual somehow and try to rectify the situation, and then, you know, I mean, a year of PS Plus is nothing to these guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Literally, yeah, it's literally nothing. Like I would it suck uh, so bad. Yeah, I'd send him like a year for, uh, free PS Plus and a free digital download code for a game of his choice off a list, and uh, like that's it. But the, again, the mm-hmm. problem is if you do that for one person, you have to do that for everybody. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's sad, and the problem is we don't know the terms of how his account was compromised. You know what I mean? Like some, yep. like somebody could have like. Does he live in an apartment or a house? Somebody could have like. Uh, so many. Th- there's so many things. Like somebody mm-hmm. could have. Somebody could have key like uh, put a key logger, and, you know, one of his computers. He could have logged onto the PlayStation Network through his computer. Boom, password and information. Uh, right. Exactly. You know, he could have went to a phishing site saying, "Oh, look at get free fifteen dollar PSN credit." You know, put in your PSN password, or the leak could have come within Sony. Nobody knows, and that's the problem. Right. right. Well, so they'll probably trace it back. Yeah. Right. I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna, they should be able to in today's day and age have definitive information as to from which place and which source of the internet that you know it was stolen. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying they're gonna catch somebody with fucking. Sur- Sleeping on a fuck bed of fucking PlayStation discs, but, um, punk bed, you know, punk bed PlayStation discs. <laughs> a, f- a fuck bed, a fuck bed of PlayStation. <laughs> that's uh, discs. that's Hiles. That's Hiles bathtub. Hiles dream, yeah. It's a bathtub full of. But uh, <laughs> anyways, um, so I'm going to end the podcast now, and I'm going to do so on a single question that you have to answer. What is the first game that comes to your mind when I ask you of a game that if you were on a desert island and you could only play one game for the remainder of your life, what would it be? Dota 2. Kyle? Um, Tomb Raider. <laughs> uh, League. LOL. Yeah, I love League of Legends too, but that's a competitive that you have to have a LAN connection. You have to have an internet connection wait, for that. Wait, so wait, I'd no, probably I'll, pick, wait, do we have the I'll internet have connection? Island. I'd probably pick. Um, yeah, guys, you have internet connect. We're just a desert island. Deserted wait, island. Why don't I? Internet. Why don't I SOS for help? Oh God! You know, it's supposed to be a fun last question. <laughs> no, Dota <don't laughs> two. Uh, fuck, that's a tough one. Um. I'd probably have to pick some type of rock star like uh, Grand Theft Auto. Big open sandbox game with lots of activities, varying activities. So San Andreas I play a lot, lot, lot and thought I'd never give it up. But um, the progression of the series and new graphics and stuff. So um, I don't know. What about you, Iroka? I'd say I'd probably have to. So if I had to ask, I'd say, I'd say GTA V. Wow. Good pick. Iroka would take Hell Divers. And Hell B- Divers. And, and BBC is. Or Dragon side. Age. Dragon Age Inquisition is a forever game. I could play the game if if Bioware like a shovel every day came with their their bu- their bosom filled with new Dragon Age and poured it out into my my PlayStation. I would lovingly accept it and play it for all it's worth every day. A guy from Bioware there might be some DLC for you gonna buy it. Oh yeah, I actually stopped playing Dragon Age so that I would not do all of the extra side missions. I've, I probably got another. 60, 70 hours of content in the vanilla game that I, I'm saving for the first DLC. What? So I'm just gonna keep I'm just gonna keep playing Dragon Age as long as I can. 
It's okay, that, that and, good. and that's um, a wrap I, be- before it becomes the Dragon Age show. <laughs> no, it really is a wrap. Um, uh, my game would probably be... Helldivers. I could, I could play Helldivers a long time. Probably like a Rogue Legacy, Oli Oli 2, man. I could play oh. that game. I mean, really, couldn't you, though? I want to get a, I want to get an Oli Oli tattoo on my ass. Yeah. I don't know what I want to say. That's... I'm going to say I'm feeling Rogue Legacy tonight. I could take Rogue Legacy on an island and just keep resetting the game back to zero and never get sick of it. I'm really not striking any resonance with my comedy with you tonight. I said I want an Oli Oli tattoo on my ass, and you're just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's great. Yeah. So anyways, Animal's tattooing his ass again. Uh, on the next pedal to the metal, Animal's ass tattoo. You won't. No. You don't have the balls to do that. My lady friend likes that I don't have tattoos. See? Animal's life, dude, is on the up and up. It's, it's on the up and up from the horrendous <laughs> shitstorm it was last year. Yeah. Anyways, we're not going to get into that. So! <laughs> if, if you have any questions, ladies... Uh, yeah, I, hit him up, in the, <laughs> hit him up in the comments. Section. <laughs> hit me up in the comments section. <laughs> if you like what you see, <laughs> don't forget to drop your name, your name, number, and Facebook. Uh... <laughs> I need your I need your blood type too. All social media accepted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, we're gonna get out of here. Thank you guys uh, as a community for listening to Pedal to the Metal. We really do appreciate each and every uh, one of you who takes the time to listen to. This little, uh, you know, home-brewed podcast that we uh, we have here to celebrate the System Wars Forum and gaming in general. Uh, I am the Eroica. Thank you tonight to Mr. Animal Mother. And thank you very much to the man, the myth, the legendary. The hashtag legendary Heil 68. Yo, should I just take all Yeah, this- we'll catch you later. All right. Throw this money in the air. Do it, dude. Throw them. No. See you, guys. Night. Later. <laughs>